Good morning and welcome to our service here this morning. I pray that wherever you are, whenever you're watching this, whether it be a recording or you're watching it perhaps at the time you would normally go to church, the cup of coffee may be in your hand, curled up on the settee. Wherever you are, I pray that God will reach out to you, that through his spirit, he will warm your heart that you will feel that you are a part of this family, of God's united family. And so as we come together this morning, Anne and I are, have combined to bring this service to you. We're going to be looking at the question of prayer, about how we pray, when we pray, what we expect to receive when we do pray. And so as we lead in to our worship this morning, let us start with prayer. Lord, we thank you that you have called us to come together this morning. You've called us to come together as your united family across this circuit. You've called us as your children to come into your presence to open ourselves up to you this morning, that we can receive from your Holy Spirit a fresh anointing of your blessing. Lord, just allow us to immerse ourselves in your presence. Allow us to soak ourselves in your joy and peace. That as this service proceeds, we will come to know more of you, that we would be closer to your heart. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, of course, worship is about bringing praise and glory to God. And there is no better song during this time of the Easter festival than we should sing number 313. Thine be the glory.
we turn to our prayers of adoration, thanksgiving and confession. A prayer of adoration. Gracious God, for your limitless love, we worship and adore you. For the way that Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, we worship and adore you. For your Holy Spirit that inspires our prayers today, we worship and adore you. Help us to be open to each sign of your grace. Help us to be ready to spend time in your presence. We worship and adore you. And a prayer of thanksgiving. Ever-living God, you are the hope of the world and the joy of the nations. And wisdom and in love you've brought forth wonders of creation and fashioned us in your own image. For this we offer our thanks. You touch our lives in so many ways. For giving us your world, for the chance to welcome you into our hearts, and for the promise of everlasting life, we offer our thanks. And a prayer of confession. God of love and power, we listen to the old stories of miracles and doubt that these things can happen today. We look at waves of misfortune and distress, of misery and anger. We feel the pressures of fear flooding into our lives, threatening to drown us, and we wonder where you are. Forgive us for the smallness of our faith. Forgive us for our doubts and help us to place our trust in you. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. I'm using the traditional version, but please use the version with which you're most comfortable. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. John 16.33 to John 17.11 But take courage, I have conquered the world. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be as one, as we are one. Acts 1, 6-14 Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes to you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. 
They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood before them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand there looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, a son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and Redeemer. But take courage. I have conquered the world, Jesus said at the end of chapter 16 of John's Gospel. Chapter 17 recounts a prayer that Jesus offered up to God, asking that God bless all those who turn to Jesus and acknowledged him as Christ. With a unity of spirit, just as Jesus knew he had with the Father. Let them be one as we are one. The chapter also represents a switch from Jesus' physical ministry to a ministry through the Holy Spirit and the development of a new Israel, new people of God, the new creation. A fresh blessing for all nations, as God's unifying call is responded to. The passage through Good Friday, Easter Sunday, Ascension and Pentecost and beyond. It's a call to us as the children of God to respond. John 16, as we heard, 
ends with a call to action from Jesus. Take courage, I have conquered the world. The reading from John shows us that through the agency of Christ we are united with God in one united body. As God's love flows down to us, so our praise rises to God. And a perpetual cycle of faith, hope and love is established. Whereby God's love flows through his church and into the nations. The other day, I was out running with Bailey, our golden retriever, doing our daily exercise around Stowe Pool, and noticed the swans there. Some were just swimming across the water, looking for food. Others had their heads down, feeding off the bottom, or sifting out of the water. Then suddenly something caused them all to take off and they headed to the other end of the pool. At this point I felt the prompting of the Spirit giving me a message which I now bring to you this morning. As the swans glide across the water all may look graceful and serene but of course underneath the swans are paddling away so in our lives, before we open ourselves to God, it may well be that everything looks great. But there's no real foundation to life. A couple of Saturdays ago, it was the men's Bible study. And someone commented that they didn't think without the knowledge of Jesus as a foundation, a rock to their life, they would have been able to get through the lockdown. By the way, any men wanting to join in the Saturday breakfast and Bible studies, please give Mark Hamley a ring. In John 6, we hear Jesus proclaiming, I am the bread of life. Anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. All of us have been called, both corporately as a circuit, but also individually. And through faith we respond, taking Christ to be our Lord. In this single act, we are adopted into the family of Christ, with all its benefits and its responsibilities. As we repent of our past errors, so, as the psalmist says, the slate is wiped clean. And Jesus himself, often having healed someone, having set them free, having restored them to full membership of the family, of the community, told the person, now go and sin no more. Take courage. He has conquered the world. When swans are feeding naturally, they dip their heads down into the water and feed off the bottom and from within the water. Our reading this morning from Acts leaves the small group of followers and disciples constantly devoting themselves to prayer. As Jill and John showed us last week, the disciples at this point were a group who were disorientated, scared and more than anything confused. Jesus had told them that they would receive power and be witnesses to him to the whole of the world. Now they'd been sent off on ministry trips whilst Jesus was with them. But somehow that was different because they always knew that he was there. So it was their Jewish roots that kicked in. Or maybe the example that Jesus had set them through his habit of spending time in dialogue with God through prayer that they now devoted themselves to prayer. And of course prayer is a bit like a wormhole to God. Through prayer we respond to God's love and communicate with and through the counsellor, teacher, leader, the Holy Spirit. C.S. Lewis said, 
that it's not God that is changed by our prayers, but we that are changed. When we pray, we need to ensure that God is given the opportunity to talk to us. Like the swans, we need to immerse our whole selves, hearts, minds and spirits, deeply into the flow of his spirit. In this way, the very nature of God will infuse us and gradually transform us. In this way, our prayers will become more in line with the will of God. Our desires and drivers will be his. Our lives will reflect Christ into the world. Take courage. He has conquered the world. Whenever you watch swans taking off, it's not so much of a vertical takeoff as a lumbering cargo plane gradually gaining access to the air. They beat their wings and seem to run across the water's surface, trying to gain the lift that will allow them to become free and airborne. Our Christian journeys so often seem the same to us. We'll have times of doubt and questioning. Where is God? When will he again turn his ear towards me and listen? It will seem that we're completely struggling to pull away, pull away from temptations and the ways of the world. Prayer is not a mechanical process or a simple solution that yields immediate results. It must be seen as a process, a process of transformation. As Paul puts it, from one degree of glory to another, into the likeness of Christ. Like all things that are really worth having, it needs working at. Just like the Israelites in the desert, taking 40 years to do a journey that should only have taken them a couple of years. But they needed time to learn to trust God, to develop the courage to truly follow him. God works at his own pace. He knows we can live with, prompting and cajoling our spirits. But we can have the confidence of knowing that Jesus stands at the finishing line and beckons us forward, willing us to enter more fully into the same relationship of faith, hope and love that he has with the Father, encouraging us to respond, Abba, Father, in our spirits, as we become immersed in the life of Christ. But we must relax and not get frustrated by seeming periods of inaction. Because Jesus promises to protect us and to lead us by the pillar of fire that is the Holy Spirit of Pentecost. Remember always to take courage. He has conquered the world. Finally, when you see a group of swans flying across the sky, they will inevitably adopt a V-shaped formation. They act not as individual birds, but as a coordinated, collaborative, efficient, united body, taking it in turns to lead, each bird flying in the slipstream of the bird in front. Just as Christians, we can follow those saints who have blazed the trail for the past 2,000 years. Each bird takes its turn to lead. And it is now our turn to lead the church. As we are called to utilise our God-given gifts and present them as offerings to God and the church. 
allowing us to be used to lead the way. Most importantly, a single swan cannot form a V-shape. It's a team game. Paul often talks about the unity of the body of Jesus. That is the church. We are now the eyes, ears, arms, feet, mouths of Christ in our communities. John makes it clear that the intention is that through our developing relationship with God and each other, we become a more united and forceful body for the glory of God, for the gospel message. It states that the end game is not so much about individual salvation. Oh, that is clearly a vital step. But a unified church, responding and acting in the power of the Spirit to take the love of God out into his hungry and thirsty world. Remember always to take courage. He has conquered the world. It's strange, isn't it, how God works? Anne and I planned this service ooh, a couple of weeks ago, really. And this next hymn actually appeared on last week's Songs of Praise. It's written by Graham Kendrick, and he was on explaining some of the background to the song. He said that his songwriting was about giving people a spiritual experience, allowing them to come into worship. And I think this song absolutely hits the mark there. But specifically, he said that the chorus to this song is to be seen as a prayer. That the opening line, shine, Jesus, shine, is to be seen as a verb, a way of calling Christ, the true light of the world, to shine out through us and all that we are. And so let us join together in singing from the hymn book number 59. That song that's all Methodists know. Shine, Jesus, shine.
our prayers of intercession. We pray for the Church, constantly adapting to an ever-changing world while trying to hold on to the timeless and universal. Help us keep the vision of establishing your kingdom here on earth. Bless the work of this Church and of our circuit, of our ministers and of all who hold office in leadership. We pray especially this week for the congregation at St Martin's. We pray for peace in your world and we pray for those who have political, religious or military influence so that a fair and lasting peace for all can be found. We remember all who work for peace between the peoples and the nations that they can draw inspiration from the life of Christ and so replace discord and conflict with harmony and love. We remember and pray for our own armed forces faced with military danger and extremes of climate. We pray for those in our notices and for all the members of our congregations across the circuit and for anyone affected in any way by the coronavirus and the current situation. We pray for people who, following Jesus' example, show compassion to others, those who work in health, and education and the emergency services. Lord Jesus, comforter and healer to those in physical, mental and spiritual need, we bring before you those known to us personally who are in need at this time. We name them in our hearts and ask that your healing touch may be felt in their lives. We pray for those who face the pain of grief at the loss of a loved one. All these we hold up to you and commit to your loving care. May we see God's light on the path ahead when the road we walk is dark. May we always hear in our hour of need the singing of the lark. When times are hard, may suffering not turn our hearts to stone. May we always remember when shadows fall, we do not walk alone. Amen.
as we leave. May the love of God be always above us to overshadow us, always beneath us to uphold us, always before us to guide us, and always behind us to protect us now and forever. And we share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. Faithful